Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. Today I'm going to show you a different processing workflow that's becoming more and more popular with many photographers. Many photographers are processing their image with the histogram mainly, meaning they're not using any of the sliders uh, in the tone section of the basic tab. They're doing all their adjusting on the histogram directly. Now there's kind of a method to their madness and I'm going to do my best to try to explain it because this isn't a method that I use, nor do I really care for it too much, but at times it does seem to work very well and give great results. So I wanted to pass this along to you. Now, if you're not super familiar with the histogram and how it works, I do have several videos on the histogram where I talk about it in detail and what it means and what it does and how you could use it to adjust images. If you haven't seen those videos, I'll have it linked in the description below and I'll have one linked up here on the top right hand side. Now, as far as this method, the theory is, and it kind of borrows, I think, uh, this is my opinion, a little bit from the zone system that Ansel Adams and Fred Archer developed. The zone system, of course, is for black and white photography. And in the zone system, you have the different zones. And it is thought that uh, image is most pleasing if you have representation of all those zones in an image. So you have all those different grays in an image, and then it's more visually pleasing. The theory here is similar. As far as tone is concerned, it's pretty much the same idea. You want the histogram spread out all the way left to right, so you have all the tones represented. But to bring it a little bit further, you also have the colors. And if you look at the histogram, you can see that there's red, green, and blue channels represented. And there's also the RGB channel. Uh, there as well. So you have actually kind of four histograms in one there. But the idea is that you'd like those red, green, and blue to be spread out too. So you have red all the way from left to right, uh, green all the way from left to right as far as these actual uh, channels on the histogram, and blue all the way from left to right, visually speaking, when you're looking at the histogram. When all is said and done, if you achieve that, then the image is supposed to be the most visually pleasing. Now, the technique is uh, some varying technique, but the main way I've seen most people do it is to start off with they go and they temporarily put saturation all the way up to 100. And when you do that, you'll see the histogram does change considerably. Um, I'm not exactly sure why they do that, but... Um, I guess it helps them better adjust it. So I'll teach you it that way. Try it both ways uh, with uh, saturation at 100 to begin with or saturation at zero to begin with. Now what you do is you usually start working from the middle out and you don't even look at the image. Don't even bother looking at the image. Just look at the histogram. And to begin with, you want to try to balance the histogram, get more of a uh, representation in the middle. So in this case, most of the histogram is off to the left. So I'm going to just push it this way. Now we have it more represented in the middle. It's not perfect. You're not going to drag it all the way like that or anything. Just get it more represented towards the middle. Then you start working out from the middle. So we go now to this area, which is shadows, and we start pushing that to the left. And you keep going until you see some of these peaks start to go higher. So uh, as I move it to the left, you can see all of a sudden they kind of start to go up in the air or go up higher. Then you just stop. Then you go to this side and you can see that red part of the histogram is going higher. Then you just go out further and then out further to the blacks over here. Bring it all the way to the edge till you see it start to peak up and even the clipping indicator might go on. Then what you do is you just take saturation back down to zero. And there is your processed image as far as tone is concerned. There's before and there's after. There's before and there's after. Now it's been my experience that this method works best with uh, portraiture, lifestyle images, 
environmental portraits, things like that. Where I don't think it works as well, and this is my opinion again, I don't mean to offend anyone, is on landscape shots and specifically on shots that are predominantly a uh, specific tone. Here we have really mostly white. And you can see that the histogram is way off to the right. So again, we'll take saturation, we'll put it all the way up. Now we want to try to balance it. So we start in the middle and work our way out. So I'll start pulling it this way. Get it a little more balanced. Now this side, as far as the shadows is concerned, is okay. Over here on highlights, let me just move that a little bit that way. Then we go to the whites and bring that right to the edge. Then we could go back to those highlights and pull those back. Go over here, pull, whoops, kind of clicked on me. So we're trying our best to balance it. We'll go to the blacks, go this way. We'll take saturation back down to zero. And there's before and there's after. To me, uh, the shadows still look a little too muddy in this shot. So I don't think it worked as well here. We'll try another landscape image, one that's a little more balanced. This is just the histograms pretty much in the middle as it is. So uh, we'll go again to saturation, take that all the way up. Maybe we have to just bring this middle part over that way just a touch. We'll go to the shadows and move that to the left and go to the highlights and move that to the right. And those of you that can't tell what I'm doing, I'm on the histogram and I'm dragging directly on the histogram. And that's what I talk about in that uh, video or number of videos I mentioned before where I, I describe the histogram in detail. So I'll go to the blacks area here and bring that to the left and go to the highlights area there and bring that to the right. And then I'll reset the saturation and there's before. And there's after, before, after. So I don't care for that one either. I think I probably would have done a better job uh, with the sliders on my own. But let's try another one, uh, kind of a lifestyle shot of uh, kids. So we have the histogram. It's pretty balanced. Maybe we'll just bring it this way a touch. Um, let me bring this way, this way. Oops, I forgot to bring saturation all the way up. Let's reset it. Let's reset it. Bring saturation all the way up. There we go go this way a little bit and then maybe bring blacks that way a little bit highlights that way a little bit reset saturation okay there's before and there's after before after so that one was easy i guess now we'll try one more all right now here's one i i chose on purpose because it's kind of low-key she's wearing a dark sweater um and you know the leaves are kind of dark behind her. So the histogram by default is going to be pretty far to the left. So let's try this. We'll take saturation all the way up. We'll go in the middle and try to even it out a little more this way. Then we'll go to highlights and push a little that way until we start seeing these peaks start to jump up. And then we'll go to highlights, or I'm sorry, whites and bring those that way. I think shadows are okay. We'll go to blacks. Bring those that way. We'll reset saturation. And there's before, and there's after. Before, after. Now, take it for what it's worth. Maybe it's something that you like. I do think it does a nice job on portraiture, uh, lifestyle shots. I don't like what it does with landscape images. But uh, let me know in the comments below. Is this something you've used before? Is there a variation on the technique that I'm not demonstrating here that you like? Uh, mention it below. I'd be interested to learn it myself. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.